everyone. How are you today? I hope everybody is fine and safe. And welcome to our math class. Last time we learned about constructing a pie graph. For this lesson, we will learn how to solve the routine and non-routine problems using data presented in a pie graph. Pie graph provides a good visual representation of the data, especially when there are many categories involved. It is difficult for the eye to distinguish between the relative sizes of the different sectors. Using the pie graph, it is easy to interpret data. Okay, pupils, just get your learning activity sheet in math so that you will be able to follow on our discussion. Let us have some examples. From, for problem number one, class DC had 24 pupils. The pie graph below shows the different range of marks scored by pupils in a mathematics test given as a fraction. For 81 to 100 marks, 1 6. For 0 to 20 marks, 1 12. For 21 to 40 marks, 1 6. For 61 to 80 marks, 1 third. And for 41 to 60 marks, 1 fourth. So let us answer number 1. How many pupils scored above 80 marks? So looking at the pie graph, we have 1 6 who scored above 80 marks. So we are going to multiply it by 24 because there are 24 pupils. So 24 times 1 is equal to 24 divided by 6 is equal to 4. So meaning to say there are 4 pupils who scored above 80 marks. For number 2 question, how many pupils had marks in the range of 41 to 60? So again, looking at the pie graph, we have one fourth whole range of 41 to 60. So multiply it again to 24. So 24 times 1 is equal to 24. Then copy the denominator. So 24 over 4 is equal to 6. So meaning to say there are 6 pupils who had the range of 41 to 60. Okay, so let us have number 3. What percentage of the class scored above 60 marks in this test? So we have 2 who scored above 60 marks. And that is 1 third and 1 six. So let us add only 1 third and 1 six. Then multiply it by 100%. So why we will multiply it to 100%? Because the full graph is equal to 100%. Okay, so let us add one third plus one sixth. But this is a dissimilar fraction. So let us get first the least common denominator of three and six. So the least common denominator of three and six is six. So six divided by three is equal to two. Then two times one is equal to two. Then six divided by six is equal to one. One times one is equal to one. So, 1, 6. So, let us, pwede na tayong mag-add because they have the same denominator. So, 2, 6 plus 1, 6 is equal to 3 over 6 times 100%. And uh, let us reduce 3 over 6 to lowest term. So, the lowest term of 3, 6 is 1 half. Then, multiply it by 100%. So, 1 half times 100% is equal to 50%. So the answer in number 3 is 50%. Okay, for number 4, if a pupil with 40 marks or below fails the test, what fraction of the pupils failed this test? So we have 1 6 plus 1 12. So let us uh, add, uh, get first the least common denominator of 6 and 12 because they are the similar fraction. So the LCD is 12. So 12 divided by 6 is equal to 2 times 1 is equal to 2. 12 divided by 12 is equal to 1 and 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So, pwede tayong mag-add 
because they have the same denominator. So we have to add the numerators. So 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Then copy the same denominator. So 3 over 12. Then reduce to lowest term. The answer is 1 fourth. Uh, you are going to uh, divide the numerator and the denominator by 3 to get 1 fourth. So 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. 12 divided by 3 is 1 fourth. So the answer in number 4 is 1 fourth. Okay, let us have uh, another example. Dr. Cruz's monthly income is 27,000 pesos. The pie graph below shows how, how his monthly income is used as a percentage. Okay, so let us answer number one. How much does he save every month? So, so, so saving we have 30%. So you're going to, ma to multiply it by 27,000 because that is the monthly income. So 30%, you are going to uh, change 30% to decimal and multiply it by 27,000. So the saving every month is 8,100 pesos. Okay, for number two, what is the difference in percent between household expenditure and savings? So, for household expenditure, we have 40% and for saving is 30%. So, just subtract the two, the household expenditure and the savings. So, 40% minus 30% is equal to 10%. So, the answer for number two is 10%. Okay, for number three. What is the total percent used for housing loan and household expenditure? So just multiply the total percent for housing loan and the household expenditure. So for housing loan, we have 20% and for household expenditure, we have 40%. So 20% plus 40% is equal to 60%. So the total is 60%. Okay, class, let's apply what you have learned from my discussion by answering learning task 4.1. A group of 500 children was asked to choose their favorite colors. The pie chart represents their choices. Okay, so let us answer number one. What fraction of the children chose green? A, 3 over 10. B, 6 over 20. C, 3 over 5, and D, 210. So looking at the pie graph, there are 150 children who chose green. So we are going to divide 150 to 500 because there are 500 children who are asked to, to choose their favorite color. So 150 divided by 500. So we are going to reduce this to lowest term. So the GCF of 150 and 500 is 50. So 150 divided by 50 is 3. And 500 divided by 50 is 10. So the fraction of the children who chose green is 3 over 10. Okay, next, you're going to answer number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5 by yourself by encircling the letter of the correct answer. Okay, for learning task 4.2, let's practice more. Answer the following. A survey was conducted on the subjects that the pupils like most in a school. A total of 80 pupils participated in the survey. The pie graph shows the result. Okay, so let us answer number one. What percent of the pupils like English and subject science? A. 65% B. 45% C. 35% D. 5% Okay, so you are going to add the percent 15% and 20% So 15% plus 20% 
is equal to 35%. So the answer is 35%. Okay, so answer number two, number three, by encircling the letter of the correct answer. Okay, for learning task 4.3, let's think and apply directions. Study the pie graph and answer the questions that follow. Okay, let us answer number one. How many books are sold in a day? A, 100, B, 50, C, 30, D, 25. So to get the answer, you're going to uh, add the number of uh, files, the number of eraser, and the number of pens. So that is 50 plus 25 plus 25 is equal to 100. So since the book represents half of the pie graph, meaning to say uh, the number of books that are sold in a day is 100%. Then answer number two, number three, number four, by encircling the letter of the correct answer. For learning task 4.4, Answer the following. Leo works in a sweet food cafe, a newly opened ice cream parlor located near the school. He asks 300 customers, ages 10 to 13 years old, about their favorite ice cream flavor. The pie graph below shows the result of this survey. So for strawberry, 54 or 18%. For vanilla, 72 for for 24 percent and chocolate 135 or 45 percent for ube is unknown okay so let us uh, answer number one which ice cream flavor was chosen by most of the customers a chocolate b strawberry c vanilla d ube okay for number two which ice cream flavor got the lowest number of votes from the customers? A. Chocolate B. Strawberry C. Vanilla D. Ube For number 3, how many customers chose vanilla as their favorite ice cream flavor? A. 72 B. 70 C. 174 D. 175 And for number 4, how many customers chose chocolate or ube as their favorite ice cream flavor? A. 72 B. 70 C. 174 D. 175 Just encircle the letter of the correct answer. That's all for today and I hope that you have learned from my discussion.